Hi, second grade. Today we're going to make a really cool um, picture that reminds me of tie-dye, if you know what tie-dye means. Um, so really the only thing you need is a piece of paper, white paper is the best, um, a pencil, some crayons, and some watercolors. All right, so to start this um, picture, we're going to be drawing a big spiral all the way around our paper. So I'm going to start in the very middle, and I'm going to come out and around, and I'm going to keep going. until I reach the edge of the paper. Okay, so that is the first step. Now the second step is choosing your colors that you would like to use for your picture. So I'm going to start with orange and all you're gonna do is go back and forth across that spiral line. So I just did that quickly because I, I want to stop and change colors when I get to that point. All right, so now I'm going to switch to a teal color. Now, you want to make, I'm going to go back to orange, because you want to make sure your colors are touching. So I need to make my orange come out a little bit more. Now your arm is probably going to get a little bit tired. So if you need to take a break, you can always stop the video and come back. Okay, so now I'm going to switch to yellow. I'm going to switch to a light green. And you can use as many different colors as you like. And you don't have to make the sections as big as I am if you want to get more colors on the paper. Okay, so now I'm going to switch to purple.
right now I'm going to use a darker blue which it may look this purple probably looks blue to you as well but it's it's actually purple now you see how I'm getting to the edge of my paper I still want to color all the way to the edge switch to pink So this is a, a super easy project, and if you like the way it turns out, you can make more pretty easily. Yeah, you could <clears throat> give it to somebody for a gift, you could hang them up. Okay, now you see how I have some space left in these two corners and over here. So I'm just gonna choose one more color and color in those spaces. So let's see. I have a light blue. I think I'm gonna use that. Now this part is a little bit hard when you get to the edge because your paper wants to wrinkle up. So you kind of have to hold it down as you color. Now I've got some bigger sections over here on this side. When you get to the edge, you might wanna put down another piece of paper or um, some newspaper to protect your, wherever you're coloring on, because I'm using just my art table and you can tell it gets lots of messes on it. But unless you have a messy table that you're allowed to color on, I would put something underneath it. Okay, so there is the picture colored. Now, the only watercolor you need is black. So I've got my palette, my black is on the end. And I'm just going to use my brush and paint over the whole thing with the black. And what happens is wherever I didn't color, the black paint goes in those cracks and fills it in. And it also lays on top of the crayon. So you get some little like black bubbles, which makes it look really cool. So you're gonna paint over the whole thing and then you need to put it somewhere to dry. And then your picture will be complete. But I think these just look so cool when they're done. Like something you really want to hang up and show people. And it was so easy to do. But it comes out like looking like maybe it was a little bit harder than that.
And this is called a crayon resist. And resist means, um, it's kind of like the word no. Like if your parents say, oh, it's time to go to bed now, and you don't want to go to bed, you're resisting going to bed. So crayons are made of wax, and the wax doesn't let the water come through. So it resists the water. It's saying no to the water. That's why you see these puddles on top of the crayon. But then where the crayon isn't, in all those little spaces, the black paint is able to soak into the paper. And it depends how much black paint you put on here too. If you really want it to look puddly, you would use more water. And it would look like it had more puddles on it. So I'll show you on the yellow, because I think that's the easiest to see. If I want it to be, if I want it to have more puddles, I just add more paint in that spot. Just be careful if you pick it up to take it somewhere to dry. You have to be careful it, that it doesn't run off the paper. Okay, so... This is one of my favorite projects because I just think it is so cool looking. It reminds me of tie-dye. All right, so I hope you like it too and I hope you'll make lots of them. All right, I will see you next time for our next lesson.